Thank you for um, that, that beautiful and inspiring welcome um, and for, for grounding us and, and starting us in, in a good way and reminding us of the importance of, um, of, of the water and the air and also our um, beautiful people that surround us, um, past and present, and our ancestors and, and the journey we're doing together. And, and thank you, Ed, and, 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 and thank you um, to the local organizing committee for, for hosting us and organizing, organizing this, um, this, this beautiful event. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm Rachel Warden, and I'm the partnership manager at Kairos, and I have, um, I have the distinct privilege of working with uh, these global partners here, and the Kairos team, and people like you, on this uh, Women of Courage, uh, Women of Peace and Security program. Thank you for coming this evening. I know there's a, a, a lot going on. Um, so thank you for, for coming. It's, it's an opportunity to highlight and celebrate um, the tenacity and innovation, perseverance and defiance of these uh, partners and their tireless and effective work at building sustainable and just and equitable peace with ecological justice despite incredible odds and challenges. It is also a uh, time to recognize uh, the support and generosity, the solidarity, the time, the donations, the advocacy of the people in this room. Uh, and, and many of you have been supportive of Kairos. Um, many of you have beautiful people that surround Kairos um, and for a long time. And we are here to let you know that this support has been um, and has had a significant impact. Supporting um, local women peace builders has had good political and financial investment. It's a good political and financial investment. Thank you for your faith in, in our work and special thanks to the local power committee, as I said, for, for hosting us. I just wanted to say a few words uh, about the, um, the Women of Courage Women Peace and Security Program. I'm not going to be long because I know you're really here to listen to the partners. Um, but this Women, Peace and Security program was de developed and had to led by partners in this room. Partners that live and work in countries and regions uh, like South Sudan, Colombia, Democratic Republic of Congo, and Palestine, places and regions uh, where um, women are particularly impacted by war. But um, also, uh, they have learned that uh, women have a critical role to play in peace building and, and change and transformation. So these partners came together um, around the theory of change or transformation, a knowledge that when, that women who are survivors and victims of gender-based violence, of sexual violence, of militarized violence, when they are provided with psychosocial support, legal support, human rights training, when they know their rights, when they can reclaim their dignity, um, they become active in peace building, in human rights processes, as human rights defenders, and also as environmental activists. So in, uh, in 2018, uh, Global Affairs approved matching funding for this program, recognizing it, I think, as a living example of the feminist international assistance policy. Now, six years into the program, we are seeing significant results and achievements, and you'll hear about those. Partners have been sharing with those with us through reports, and, and, and last week, we've been sharing. More women uh, know their rights and are advocating for their own rights and the rights of others. Women are starting, uh, who started out organizing monthly prayer meetings, are now active members of parliament. Men who oppose the work of women, peace, and security are now supporters. More men are organizing around this work and are becoming allies. Um, women, peace builders are addressing climate change. And they're also developing uh, economic empowerment projects, recognizing that women, peace, and security, and human rights can't be done without economic empowerment and economic support. So tonight, uh, partners are going to highlight their work and these achievements and provide some concrete examples. 
This is the last year of this current program, the Global Affairs Canada, but our priority is to find ways to sustain this work. We want to make sure that these outcomes are sustained and they're, that they're, they're support for the emerging work, the work, work that's going on around women peace builders and climate change and economic empowerment. Just a bit about the, uh, the tour. By being here tonight, you're part of the Climate Conflict and Gender Women of Courage 2023, 2023 tour. And we brought actually nine representatives um, from these four partners to Canada. Um, and you'll hear, you'll hear about these partnerships. Um, so last week, those partners um, met in Toronto. Um, they shared strategies. They participated in a trilingual reflective exercise. They had rich discussions about reconciliation, about decolonization. They evaluated their work together. And then this week, we divided into three groups. Uh, one group went east to Montreal and, uh, and Sydney, Nova Scotia. A group went west to Winnipeg and Kelowna. And we're the Ottawa group. We the Ottawa group. Um, and, and, and we've been here in Ottawa uh, in, in lobby meetings, um, and, um, and you'll hear more about those as well. And uh, we've also uh, had some great meetings that have been, been set up at the local committee, a very, um, uh, uh, an excellent meeting and tour today at the Wabano um, uh, Center. Um, now I want to introduce uh, the partners, and I, I know you want to hear from them. Um, and you'll hear directly from them about their context and the incredible outcomes of their work. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce um, the partners from this, this slide, from your stage right, I guess, to, to left. Um, and, and, then, and then we'll hear from each of them for, for 10 minutes. So on, on my immediate left is Gloria Ancaro. And Gloria is um, a member of the leadership of the Organización Femenino Cultural. Uh, which, and, which is a long-time partner of Kairos and is an organization that has 51 years of existence. Uh, it works uh, on human rights in the Medio region of, 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 of Colombia. And she is currently uh, leading the organizational processes in a, in a municipality called Yondo. Uh, Gloria has extensive experience with the OFP. We heard from her that her aunt was the first uh, executive director of the Organización Femenina Popular, and she started the OFP when she was uh, when she was 14. Gloria uh, came to Canada in 2018 with the first uh, uh, Women of Courage uh, uh, partners gathering. And then to Gloria's left, uh, there's uh, we have. John Rachel. Uh, John Rachel is the advocacy coordinator of the South Sudan Council of Churches. She's a long time, a long sorry, a long time ecumenical uh, uh, virus partner. Um, John uh, works to analyze peace processes, in particular the revitalization agreement of the resolution of conflict in South Sudan, the current peace process, uh, while informing policies and decisions. Uh, decision making of churches and government. She um, she's engaged in contextualizing and implementing the women, peace, and security agenda in South Sudan uh, and relating it to uh, inclusion of women and youth and peace building, governance, and climate change. Uh, John Rachel was a um, a delegate in the Kairos and for Love of Creation uh, COP27 delegation. Uh, last year, and um, very recently, uh, she she addressed uh, the um, UN uh, United Nations Security Council on the situation in South Sudan. Um, and then to uh, Rachel's left, we have Tarek Tarek Al uh, Tarek is a Christian Palestinian who was raised in the little town of Bethlehem. He works, uh, he currently works uh, with the Public Peace and Security Project as a youth coordinator at, at PM, the Palestinian Conflict and Transformation Center. He's very active in civil society and is a member of numerous choirs. Um, he's been 
been involved in the Food Peace and Security Program, uh, the Women of Courage Program, from the very beginning, and also participated in the first um, gathering that took place in 2018. And then, last but not least, um, to Tarek's left, we have Chantel Boudou. And Chantel Boudou is a project manager of the Women of Peace and Security Program of Eriete de Justice in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Chantal has numerous years of experience with uh, Eriete de Justice uh, defending, protecting, and promoting human, human rights. She's participated in many trainings on women's rights and has uh, been involved in the popularization of laws, national laws and international laws on, on, on women's rights. So, so Chantal has been to uh, I think she's been in Canada four times, right? In 2011, um, 2000, as, as one of the first women of courage tourists, she was here in 2016, uh, uh, and also in 2018 uh, for the first um, women of courage uh, gathering, and again today. Chantal was also a delegate uh, with the uh, Cairo's uh, Curl of Creation uh, delegation to COP. So um, that's enough for me. Let's let's hear from the partners. We're going to go from from left to right, um, and each partner is going to speak for for ten minutes. And I'll give you a little bit of a sign. You have three minutes, and then um, and then and then another sign when it's time to stop. So welcome everybody, and, and, and thank you. Bueno, buenas noches a todas y a todos. Como Rachel lo ha dicho, vengo de Barranca Bermeja, Colombia, una región del Magdalena Medio. Una organización de 51 años trabajando por la defensa de la vida, los derechos humanos de las mujeres y el territorio. Es una organización que ha estado trabajando por 51 años por defender a las mujeres, defender el territorio. La organización femenina popular la conforma 2.300 mujeres de la región. La organización de la popular organización de las mujeres, hay 2.300 mujeres que son parte de ella. Mujeres campesinas. Mujeres amas de casa o cabeza de familia. Women who are peasants coming from the from the land who are head of family. Mujeres víctimas del conflicto armado por el desplazamiento, la desaparición forzada, la violencia sexual. They are victims of the armed armed conflict. They have been displaced from the from the places. Some of the People have disappeared. They have been a subject of sexual violence as well. Mujeres víctimas de violencia de género o intrafamiliar, que le llamamos también. They have been victims of gender violence or interfamily interfamily violence. Pero sobre todo mujeres populares que viven en barrios donde la vulneración de sus derechos es total. Almost all they are women who are living in a neighborhood where they have their rights. Mujeres que no pudieron terminar estudios o aprender a leer o a escribir. They couldn't finish their studies or some of them never learned to read or write. Mujeres campesinas, afros, indígenas. Some of them are from uh, native, some of them are af, af, af. The African origins, uh, some of them are, are living in the rural areas. Mujeres y jóvenes que le apostamos a la vida, que le apostamos a la no violencia y que le apostamos a una construcción de paz distinta. We are women and youth who are uh, in favor of the non-violence. 
con el proyecto de Mujer Paz y Seguridad ha sido una fortaleza en estos seis años. The project Peace and Security has been a strength in the last three years. Ya que nos ha permitido llegar a estas mujeres en las veredas, en los barrios, en los sitios muy lejanos y también facilitar la participación y llegada de ellas a la ciudad. It allowed us to contact these women in the neighborhoods, in the areas, even in the most remote areas where they are, and in entering in, in connection with, uh, with the, the, the rural areas, with the big areas, connection with the city, and entering in connection with the cities. Entonces son mujeres que hemos podido hacerle atención psicológica, atención jurídica capacitarlas, que conozcan sus derechos y que puedan defender sus derechos y apoyar y ayudar a otras mujeres a hacerlo. Mujeres de Coraje nos permitió a la audiencia defensorial traer más de mil mujeres y muchas de estas mujeres dieron las gracias porque pudieron hablar de la violencia sexual y de la violencia que están viviendo en su territorio. Más de 200 mujeres atendidas por cada año y mujeres que hoy defienden los derechos, son guardianas de la vida en la naturaleza y están capacitadas y participando con sus liderazgos. These are more than 200 women who know their rights, who respect the nature, who respect the life, and they can participate with other women. Hoy están en espacios como la mesa de víctimas, el comité de trata de personas, el comité de erradicación de violencias contra las mujeres. Now they are facing down at the table and they talk about problems of traffic of women, of violence of women, and they speak about those problems. Y muchas en el movimiento social de mujeres contra la guerra y por la paz. And many of them are in the social movement against the war and in favor of peace. Que con nuestra simbología como la bata negra que es fundamental como un posicionamiento de la voz y las palabras de las mujeres en contra de la guerra y a favor de la paz. We have a symbol, it's a, it's a black uh, robe that is uh, representing, uh, showing that we have a voice and that we, are, we can talk against the war. Una prenda que no es un vestido, una prenda que es símbolo de resistencia y de defensa de los derechos humanos y la construcción de paz. This is not a dress, this, this, is, this is a symbol of resistance and it's a symbol of our defense of the human rights. Y hoy en una campaña de haciendo cartas por la paz. And today we are doing a campaign to uh, write letters for the peace. Hoy Kairos con el programa Mujeres de Coraje nos permite llegar a las veredas, a los municipios lejanos para la que las mujeres a través de una carta expresen cómo les ha afectado el conflicto armado y cómo quieren ellas la paz. With uh, the the project of Kairos of Courage of Women, these women they can express and they can write letters where they are talking about how they are willing to get the peace. Y estas cartas se las están escribiendo al presidente, al Ministerio de, Justi de, de la Igualdad y a la Oficina del, eh, de Paz. 
and they are sending this letter to the president, to the ministry, and the uh, organization of peace. En conclusión, mujeres de coraje desde su estrategia de mujer, paz y seguridad ha sido fundamental y vital para las mujeres en Colombia y en esta región. Um, in conclusion, we can say that the women of courage, they have working for the peace and safety and it's been a movement that is being fundamental for us in Colombia. Le ha pedido, la, le ha permitido recuperar la voz a quienes no tenían la oportunidad de hablar y a empoderarse ni a defender los derechos y a trabajar por una paz para toda su comunidad. That allow us to have a voice, that allow us to empower ourselves and that allow us to get and understand our rights. Les agradezco porque eso literalmente ha salvado vidas, vidas de las mujeres, vidas de las familias y pedirles seguir trabajando en la continuidad de este proyecto ya que es vital para nuestra comunidad. We want to thank you because this project has saved life, has saved life of women, has saved life of families and allows us to continue doing our work in the community. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. from South Sudan, which is a country that is going through a transition. Um, there's a lot of conflict that has happened in the country, conflicts that are still happening in the country, but we are holding our hands together and moving. So that's why I'm saying that we are in transition. Next year in December, we hope to have elections and we have to do everything that we can to make sure that we have peace before during and after the elections. So it is a country in transition. I am from South Sudan Council of Churches, which is an ecumenical body that is made up of 10 churches, um, seven member churches, and three affiliates. Um, I can give you information on what those churches are, but the Anglican Church is part of it, the Catholic Church is part of it, Presbyterian is also part of it. And we have five pillars on which we work. There is the advocacy pillar, the neutral forum pillar, reconciliation pillar, capacity strengthening pillar, and lastly, the spirituality pillar, which we think is very important for the four to work. And with these five pillars, we've got a mandate to promote peace and development in South Sudan. We are a legitimate and a credible body that is well respected by the people and we exist in all communities in South Sudan. The church is very sacred in South Sudan and you will find a church in every community, even if it's just a side saw that have been put together and they'll put the, the cross to, to show that there is a church here, it's existing. So the church is a very big network and we embrace it and we are very proud of it. I want to talk about the Women Business Security Program in South Sudan and how it has been very important, especially for the women. There was a disconnect between the women in the churches, the women from the civil society, and also the women politicians. But this program has created a space for these women to connect, to unite, put their hands together for a cause. And at the inception of this program, the women sat together and started a campaign and they marched to parliament and demanded that women should be at the table. Yeah. Rachel in the beginning talked about the peace agreement in South Sudan. So the women demanded that they should be on that table to discuss and also make decisions. Yeah. And as a result, the women were given 35% in the agreement and also in key decision-making positions. So that is a very important outcome 
for this program and also for the women of South Sudan. And this group of women is called the Women Think and they continue to meet monthly because they need to continue to share information. Women in the, in the politics, women in the parliament, they continue to meet. And out, out of this group, three of them are now MPs, of which one of them is the chief whip in the parliament. Three of these women are also ministers. So these are key positions that we hope that we will continue to promote. But these outcomes, these positive results, have got a lot of challenges. And climate change is one of them. Women continue to face a lot of challenges, and this climate change has made it worse. Economic empowerment is important for these women. If we want more women to participate in politics, they need to have some money, because you cannot run for office with no money. You cannot join a political party without paying some money. So they need to have economic empowerment. And I believe that as we continue with this program, we will be prioritizing how we can respond to climate change and how we can respond to economic empowerment. It's also beautiful to see that we can put our hands together. People from different countries, we don't even know each other, but we know that we have a heart that has to beat. So that's why we hold our hands together and we promote women, peace, and security. That's what I can share with you this evening. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's great to be here with you, and thank you for all coming out to um, hear our stories and hopefully take our stories with you and for the continued support that you give to Kairos. Um, so I'm Tark. I come from Palestine, from Bethlehem, um, and I'm here with We Am, the Palestinian Conflict Transformation Center. Um, before I start talking about the work of the center, it's important to just contextualize a little bit of the reality that we live in. Um, so many of you are familiar with the Israeli occupation, and maybe I've spoken to a few of you who visited the land. Um, but statistically speaking, um, we have a very big problem as it relates to resource access accessibility, to the freedom of movement, and this really affects our youth and women specifically. When we talk about young girls and young women, uh, we talk about the most highly educated demographic um, in Palestine, especially women between the ages of um, 21 to 35. They have the highest attainment of higher education, but also have the highest unemployment rate. When we talk about Palestinian youth, and this is the largest demographic, with 70% of the Palestinian community under the age of 30, 87% of them wish to leave and immigrate. And oftentimes, and you're probably familiar with these slogans that the youth and the children are the future, and it seems for Palestine, their future is not within the Palestinian territories, with 13% only expressing a desire to stay. And this isn't because they have fallen out of, love, out of love with Palestine or with society, it's because they simply do not see security or their livelihood within the Palestinian territories. As in many places around the world, we see during COVID an increase and a huge rise in domestic abuse, in gender-based violence, and in violence in general. And this, of course, disproportionately affects women girls and children. And so when we talk about what we can do in the Palestinian community, we have found that we're fairly powerless to influence national change and to influence binational change to be able to free ourselves from occupation. But we have found that we're very powerful to influence social change within our communities, working with each other. So in 1994, um, we am started its first program in Sulha, which is conflict mediation based in the Arab tradition. After years of working in this, 
we found many reoccurring conflicts. And so there was a desire to go from being reactive, where there is conflict mediating it, to becoming proactive. How can we mitigate and limit the rise of conflict in our society? So we saw a lot of conflict arising as it relates to women's rights, as it relates to women simply having equal access to inheritance, to having a voice in public, to being able to go out in public. And so we established the Women's Empowerment Program, which includes WPS programming since 2018. And so through this programming, we focus on social, political, and economic empowerment understanding that the economic component, which is something that all of our partners have in common, is integral to women's independence. If women continue to be dependent on male patriarchs within their family or their community, then their independent agency is limited by that dependence. We also work with youth. And oftentimes in conflict situations, our youth are too busy reacting that they aren't able to practice their culture. So trying to build a sense of identity and to connect our youth back to the community so that there's a sense of belonging. With 87% wishing to immigrate, we have many youth who are moving away from the community. And so we are trying to use this as a way to say, no, you have a voice, you have a place here, and we can work together. And then we work with children. Where we are situated in Bethlehem was deemed as 2017's world's, world's most gas area. And so we have very high rates, not of PTSD, but instead what we call CTSD, Continuous Traumatic Stress Disorder. And that means that we can't focus on trauma healing yet, but instead we focus on trauma coping. Being able to teach our children mechanisms using arts and theater and writing and dance and music oftentimes, to be able to allow our children to lead lives characterized by their aspirations and ambitions instead of by the trauma that they've accumulated. And finally, our final program is Citizen Diplomacy, in which we welcome visitors, both formal and informal, to our center to talk about what it's like to be a Palestinian living under occupation, what it's like to be a Christian and a Muslim Palestinian, and where we talk about creative nonviolent resistance to oppression in all its forms, which includes the dismantleship of patriarchy. And it's important to say that in our context, that the greatest form of resistance that we have is by our simple existence. And so all of these programs we like to see as part of our active, direct, nonviolent resistance to occupation, to patriarchy, to injustice. So there's a lot of things that can be say, said about this program, but I thought I would focus a little bit on male allyship, which is the smallest component of our WPS programming, but one that we find quite important, especially towards a holistic approach. So especially since men are oftentimes the ones who are most advantaged by patriarchy, by sexism, we find it necessary for us to be accountable for that advantage which directly harms women and women pay the cost for. And so we gather together and it's important to note that many of the men that we work with oftentimes come to us not as allies, but instead those who wish to speak out against our work those who find women, peace, and security threatening. But it's through welcoming them and building that relationship, opening this dialogue, and welcoming and including them in our work that we are able to change these ideologies towards more inclusive, supportive ideologies, recognizing that our liberations are all tied to each other, that we are interconnected. And this isn't simply nationally, we also believe this internationally. And so just a quick story of change. We had one Muslim leader, a sheikh, um, from the Muslim community who came to us because he was very much against our programming, thinking that it threatens Palestinian communities and especially the Palestinian family. And after being with us for a year, and he's been with us now for almost three years, he had this complete switch this complete change and is now one of our biggest supporters from the men of this programming. 
And one of the things that he said is he realized throughout our programming that protection that looks like the limitation and restriction, especially of women, is simply a furthering of the marginalization and oppression which he faces or they face. And so in our context, oftentimes, some women are kept inside their home, inside their community, their travel restricted in the name of protecting them from sexual assault, from protecting them from social stigmatization. And so what we've been able to do is work with these men and say, no, if we want to be protectors, if we want to protect, we can do that by dismantling the patriarchy by working with other men to remove all barriers so that women have equal and equitable participation in socioeconomic life. And so this is just a small story of change that we have, and I encourage you, if you have the time and resources, to come and visit us. And this is six years of work, and we're hoping for many, many more as the change has just begun. And thank you for your continued support. which stands for inheritance of justice in English and has been supported by Carlos Canada. And the project Women in Peace is one of which we have stood on and built on in regards of putting women in, at the front line. We mostly work with women who are victims or have are survivors of sexual abuse. And we work with them in regards of finding back their voice in through different activities which allows them to finally be able to talk about the experience. We promote and advocate in regards of women knowing their rights, knowing how to use them, and most importantly, knowing that they do have some. Not only do we look into laws on, on the local um, basis, but also internationally. We want women to understand that they are protected, not only within the laws of the country, but also internationally. We work mostly and based on the convention 1325 Women Rights and Children Rights Convention. Once they have participated to some of our activities, they are able to finally join and be the ones talking about their own history, stories. And for women who are survivors of sexual uh, conflict-based sexual assaults, they are taken care of in regards of getting the appropriate health care. Okay. 
those women are become most of the time the ambassadors of the project and they are the ones who are now reaching out to other victims to help them and support them and through that they help us to help promote the importance of being able to talk about the experiences. And those ambassadors are able to not only have a huge impact within their own communities, but also participate actively in regards of eco, any economic status uh, activities, but in addition of that, help the community resolve through different um, events and activities uh, there to help and support their activities. Sorry, go on. <laughs> okay, go on. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> And they help resolve peacefully different community issues. Sorry for that. Sometimes I'm back. Those ambassadors have helped us to go and talk to the to the local chiefs and help them understand that not only that there is laws that defend human women rights. But in addition to that, they need to be able to be applied within those communities. Because traditionally, women are meant to be, to take care of their children, to be in the kitchen, and not really have a voice, those ambassadors have helped us to help men understand that there are laws, and there are, those laws should be applied within those communities. For many, many years, girls were not allowed to go to school. Nowadays, our ambassadors have helped us promote girls going to school and give, being given the same opportunities as their brothers. Today, those women are also be, being considered by their communities. They are sometimes given the opportunity to handle or be the chief or representative of 10 houses, which means that we have been able to bring, the, um, put, bring to the communities the importance of women participating, not only economically, but also somehow politically within the communities. Ces femmes qui veulent participer de plus en plus se butent maintenant à des difficultés pour avoir des moyens d'aller loin avec cette euh, initiative de transformer la société positivement. Of course, that comes with challenges. Women are unfortunately sometimes faced with uh, some of those challenges and are not allowed or not able to explore or work as much as they wish within their communities. And that's the reason why they had requested some support in regards of financial means and they applied to Kairos Brands, and Kairos has supported them in regards of getting, uh, purchasing some land and being able to also have some, um, and they also have got some cattles. Maintenant, the activity of the village that they had given to the women, to the women, 
C'est but au problème des changements climatiques. And fortunately, that means that all. Uh, Right now, the challenge is the fact that there is also environmental issues. And fortunately, right now, agriculture is becoming very hard because there is a huge change within climate change. L'activité ne produit pas. Et le, le grand problème, c'est la prolifération des déchets plastiques. Et, fortunately, because many had chosen agriculture as a form of independence and gaining some ownership within a financial ownership, due to the climate change and the lack of production within the different cultures that they do, they have now come to facing a huge challenge in the regards of not being able to produce as much as they were hoping. And the second challenge is having a huge production of plastic, which is also impacting the, the different lens that they have to... Um, the déchets plastic appauvri the sol, and when it rains, all the bottles of plastic, all the sachets, qui se déverse dans des caniveaux, dans des pierres, et ça bloque, il y a inondation, et ça fait que les chars sont détruits, sont détruits et d'autres plastiques vont vers les lacs, fait qu'il n'y a plus assez de captures de poissons, et c'est la famine qui entame qui entame, voilà, qui est, qui entame la population. And fortunately, due to the lack of um, quick elimination of plastic that impacts not only the water so a lot of people are not able to to um, go fishing for example because there is a profit or a huge amount of plastic that that ends within the lakes there is also the fact that unfortunately those plastic not only the bottles but also the plastic bags usually and in within the evacuation the water evacuation which creates uh, a lot of um, I'm it's sorry. It's yeah, it's blocking it, but it, it creates um, floods. Thank you. Okay. Now, for the women, they have resonated in certain regions. In certain regions, they say that if they had a way to collect all these plastic and to transform and to fabricate other materials, the chairs in plastic, the gobelets, the pastels, other utensils, the cuisine and other paniers pour le propos du marché, elles peuvent avoir assez de moyens financiers et pouvoir économique pour bien faire leur travail d'instauration et de consolidation des pays de sécurité dans le milieu de la base jusqu'au sommet. Je vous remercie. And so women didn't want to just sit down and wait for a solution, they find a solution. What they're looking for now is some support in regard to finding a way to transform all that plastic into different, play, uh, different uh, tools that could be used within the community. It could be basin, basket, any type of transformation. They need support in regard to finding a way to transform that plastic into useful tools for those communities. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chantal. This is a really difficult job to, 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 to limit this vital and transformative story into 10 minutes. Um, and and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. You've heard, you, you've heard about these, these, this um, incredible, these incredible outcomes, right? These um, life-saving, We, um, we have actually um, just had a few days of, of, of lobbying, um, meeting with um, parliamentarians and senators for global affairs, and we've, we've been bringing these messages, and sometimes in, in, in much less time, because, you know, and it's, it's, it's nice to have a little bit more time, but, we, but obviously we need support, um, and, and, and uh, hopefully you'll hear from the partners, um, you'll continue to hear from the partners since the beginning. Um, but I want to, um, before we get into questions and answers, uh, I want to invite my colleague uh, Cheryl 
Uh, to talk a little about, a bit about the advocacy and some of the work and messages that we were doing on them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Rachel. And thank you to the partners, uh, again, for uh, sharing your stories. As uh, Rachel mentioned, we were on Parliament Hill. Uh, we also met with uh, global affairs uh, officials, and we went, met with the, um, the WPS ambassadors, and we kept telling the stories over and over. They're so compelling. And our message to parliamentarians to everybody we met with is very simple. This um, feminist international uh, uh, assistance policy, uh, known as PIA, that the uh, government of Canada um, has put forward, which is very innovative, is paying off, is working. We know this after five and a half, six years of the incredible work that our partners are doing on the ground. And uh, we just need to fund it. You know, we need, we need money. And uh, this uh, incredible Nicaragua program is, is coming to an end, but of course, we need uh, to continue this work, and as Rachel said, uh, there is emerging work with this, it, uh, with regards to the climate crisis, as Chantal and others have, have said, that um, the women are, the progress only goes so far, however, they're finding that there's limitations in terms of the climate crisis and the impacts on their work, and also on, um, uh, which is actually related to economic development opportunities as well. It is very hard to continue to work in peace building when you cannot put food on the table. So we are seeing the alignments between um, uh, human rights as well as economic development. And we want to continue this incredible work. Um, so we are appealing to the government of Canada to increase its funding, uh, its uh, international assistance uh, envelope. Uh, to 0.7% of gross national income, which is less than a penny per dollar, uh, is a drop in the bucket, uh, especially when you consider how important this investment is. Um, so we're asking for uh, some, well, we have financial asks, which is, that's one part of it. The other part of it is to increase its, um, its uh, client finance and to target specifically women-led organizations, uh, such as our partners. Uh, to make sure that this funding is predictable and, uh, and long-term as well. And then there is also a uh, diplomatic ask to ensure that Canada is there in the international space is lobbying as well as with individual uh, countries, asking that they ensure that um, women are at the decision-making table. So those are some of our practical asks. And this is where you come in. Uh, we do have a, a, an advocacy campaign happening. We are asking, calling upon you uh, to please send a letter to your uh, member of parliament. Um, and it's also a copy to the relevant ministers. It's here. Uh, I'm going to pass this out. There's a QR code, but there's also a website at the bottom. So we should end up with the policy to our website. Very easy, you can do this in three seconds, send the letter. Um, I do encourage you to read the letter, of course, so maybe more than three seconds, but do read the letter. And please also consider telling your networks about it, and better yet, bringing friends over, have some cookies, and write, uh, kind of write your letter um, to your MP and copy the relevant ministers as well, because that goes a long way too. It's really important for them to hear from you that this is really quite important, um, and we need to ensure that the next budget, we can see an increase in the work, overall assistance with the target approach to women uh, led organizations. Did I cover it? Perfect. Okay. I got a nice sheets of paper. hacerlo en español. Uh, ¿Puede usted comentar en el papel de Petro lo que está pasando ahora con ese gobierno? I'm asking about the government of uh, Petro and what's happening. Okay. Thank you. Is 
quite interesting to hear what happened in Sonado between the uh, the numbers of women being representative and uh, creating uh, political positions. But the number is good, but what about the, the let's say, the political position? Because uh, in other countries, what happened, women arrived to the power and they start just uh, following the same policies of oppression and injustice. There are 50 years of war in Colombia. 50 años de sometimiento por los actores armados. Somos para generar el guerrillero. 50 years of submission to armed groups, guerrillas, etc. Es la primera vez que en Colombia hay un gobierno de izquierda. It's the first time that there is a left-wing government in Colombia. Y aunque él retomó los diálogos de paz, porque gobiernos anteriores habían dejado ahí enterrados de los acuerdos de paz con la paz. He, he started the uh, peace talk because the previous government had put aside the, the, the peace talks. Y ha iniciado conversaciones de paz con el ELN. He, he started uh, the, the dialogue of uh, peace with his ELN. LN is a group. LN, the Army of Liberation in uh, Colombia. Y viene haciendo reformas de política realmente importantes en la salud, en lo laboral, en lo pensional. He's doing the political reforms that are important in health and in different areas. La violencia es aún así en el territorio se han agudizado porque allí sigue el actor armado y quiere de alguna forma controlar y evitar que estas cosas se transformen. The violence continues uh, in, the, in the different territories because they want to continue controlling the situation. De todas formas, seguimos con la esperanza de que este gobierno pueda hacer transformaciones reales de fondo Sabemos que no es fácil. We have hope that this government will be able to do some transformation. We know that it's not easy. Pero queremos seguir conservando la esperanza de que esto sea posible. But we want to continue keeping hope that this is going to be possible. Y ahí es donde estamos nosotras las mujeres diciendo queremos ser actoras activas en el trabajo por la paz. Queremos que nuestra voz se escuche y queremos realmente una paz que vaya más allá de callar los fusiles. Tiene que transformar las realidades de pobreza y desigualdad que hay. That's where women we want to have a voice in the situation because we want a situation of peace where we always we we can have a transformation not only to stop the army and the confrontation but have a transformation in the society. No sé si te <laughs> puede contestar. I hope I answer your question. Uh, thank you, thank you for highlighting that. I hope you got you right. You're asking which positions and what change has happened, right? Um, essentially, is what kind of uh, policies women when they arrive to the power, the position of power, they follow, right? Are they supporting changes or progressive changes, or they are supporting in just uh, policies that have uh, perpetuated oppression? And so on? Okay, for the first time, we had the first female minister for defense, and during her time, she established the general court marshals, and these court marshals are holding perpetrators of conflict-related sexual violence accountable. That had never happened when there were male ministers. In addition, we also have the gender-based violence bill that has been tabled, and we have the family law, which is supporting women to stop the inheritance of women 
in the South Sudanese culture. So those are the changes that the women have brought. And I believe that when we also have a speaker who is female, and I think this is why these bills have been passed and these laws are being tabled. So we see that when the women are in these positions, they really bring out the issues that women are facing. And it's not only that, there are also issues, other policy issues that they bring out, not only for women, but for the whole country. So we see the change and we need to assist. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much for a very moving and uh, really quite exciting uh, account of what is going on far away from here, but suddenly feeling very close indeed. Uh, we in Canada are also engaged in many directions to improve the, uh, the status of women, in, in, for example, in indigenous communities and in certain very large church organizations. And, uh, and, and many other places. Uh, I would like to ask Kairos, if I can, uh, to uh, perhaps indicate what kind of a program uh, will be uh, crafted in order to keep uh, the community aware of what Kairos is doing and what, what, what successes will be achieved and so on, so that the interest is maintained and, of course, the desire to support Kairos is there, is there another question? No. Okay. There is uh, very few questions in, in French again, so let's try French, right? Je veux poser la question à Chantal. Que je m'en présente. Chantal est membre donc enfin héritier de justice et membre d'un collectif de droits de l'homme dans la région des Grands Lacs africains qui était mon ancien partenaire dans mon ancienne vie professionnelle. Donc c'est elle qui m'a invité. Oui. Et donc, je, je voulais te poser la question, Chantal, vu la, la, la complexité de la vie de, de, de la femme dans, dans sa vie de tous les jours dans la région des Grands Lacs africains. Euh, je sais qu'il y a des, des, des synergies, des groupes, euh, je, je parlerai d'autres organismes comme Cocafem. Comme, comme C'est bon C'est pour l'interprétation parce que. Ah, I'm sorry. Ça va être I'm sorry. Ça va être so that everybody has the right question. Mm -hmm. So if you can speak slower so I can make sure that I will translate. So translate to her. I'm going to try my English, my bad English. My question is uh, how do the Nintendo Justice interact with uh, uh, networks like Coca Fem, like El Degel, like Clont? To, to, to face these problems of, uh, that overcome women in Congo, especially because I think the, the problems they are facing are really the same as in Burundi, as in Rwanda, as in North Kivu. How do you interact? And uh, are political issues in the countries affect your work? Thank you very much. Les femmes, 
se partagent les informations et il arrive que les femmes font des on remet on qu'on conçoive des cahiers de charge à remettre à telle ou telle autorité pour la sécurité surtout et la promotion du droit de la femme dans notre région. Pour la RDG, je crois que vous connaissez, la RDG, je ne sais pas si elle existe, elle n'existe plus, mais elle existe. On a été mis en soutien par la politique, mais elle existe lentement là. For women in the Great Lakes, there is an organization called COTAFEM, which is basically a union of women representing Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania, Uganda, and the RC. All of those groups get together. Though political conflicts exist within those countries, women have been able to continue working with one another. And more and more, we see women influencing those politics through different po policies that they bring to their own community and government. And it is true the exchange that is happening within the Great Lake coca that we are able to support one another. Bueno, yo solo tengo que decirles gracias 
I just want to say thank you. Gracias por permitirnos traer la voz de muchas mujeres. Thank you for allowing us to bring to you the voice of many women. Gracias por ser esos oídos y esos ojos que pueden transmitir también el, el trabajo de Kairos. And thank you because of those are eyes and voice that can transmit the work of Kairos. Y gracias por permitirnos también a cada una de las organizaciones que estamos acá de nuestros países generar transformaciones y cambios en las mujeres. And thank you for allowing each of these organizations that are, that are here to be able to bring transformation to our women. Y bueno, eh, quiero también compartir en este momento, invitarlos, invitarlas a ser parte de la campaña Cartas de Paz. To be part of the campaign Letters of Peace. Las mujeres están en Colombia escribiendo las cartas al presidente o al Ministerio de la Igualdad. The women are in Colombia writing this letter to the president, to the Ministry of Equality, or the Office of the Alto Commissioner for the Peace, and the High Commissioner for the Peace, telling them how they have dealt with the conflict and how they want peace for the women in the fields, in the camp, in the barrio, telling them how the conflict has affected them and how they want the peace to come in the where they live, in the neighborhoods, in the, in the land, in their territories. Yo les invito a hacer la carta igualmente pidiendo que la voz de las mujeres de la Organización Femenina Popular sea escuchada en esta en este construcción de paz y se nos den las garantías para poder seguir viviendo y trabajando a favor de la paz y los derechos humanos en Colombia. I, I invite you to write a similar letter so the uh, popular organization for women can continue doing the work for the peace. Entonces, pues acá están las hojas y si gustan hacer la carta y enviarla, de verdad que para nosotros va a ser muy muy importante. We have the papers here, so if you can write this letter, this is something that is going to be very important for us. También quiero, si las compañeras me lo permiten, Chantal y Rachel, like quiero compartir este símbolo I want to share this de conexión y unidad de las mujeres y del trabajo por la paz. Entonces, pues quiero compartir con ustedes esta, esta bata si desean llevarla a sus comunidades y tenerla allí presente en esa conexión to your community. y nos ha impulsado tanto a través de Kairos y en ella la representación a Kairos dando las gracias de todo lo que significa su apoyo Muchas gracias I just want to share my sentiment with, with Gloria to thank you. I'm so grateful for your sacrifice for peace, for a peaceful and thriving world. And I don't want you to give up because change will happen, the transformation will happen. And I know it, it may seem that things are not working out and things are not changing, but they are in every way that they can. So thank you and I appreciate you. Yeah, I'd like to echo many of the sentiments that were shared, and I'd like to give a special thanks to Kairos for all of its staff, for all of its work, and the supporters of Kairos um, through which this wouldn't have, through which this is possible. 
Um, we had a lot of bureaucratic meetings this week, um, and I think we became very aware of our power. But I'd also like to thank you for your power and the support that you give us through that, and encourage you to continue using it. In many of our meetings, we heard from um, politicians, forgive me if that's not the correct term, about the limited funds that are available and the difficulties in being able to access funds. We heard this also from GAC at the same time that fossil fuels and the war industry continue to be funded. And so I'd like to leave you with this message maybe to ask, especially because you are the people who elect um, these parliamentarians, that you continue to pressure them and ask them to make the resources work in tangent and in line with your ideologies. If you believe in justice work, not just justice work internationally, but also domestically. Our liberation is all interconnected, and I think it would be wonderful if not only our countries, our women, and our people were empowered, but also all people living here as well and across the globe. And thank you again. Thank you very much for all of you who are here and who take the time to come and let us share our stories. This is my fourth trip with Kairos. And I have seen the changes that have been applied through your efforts and your support in DRC. And I would like to thank you again and ask again for your support because we know that you are our best ambassadors to those who can take the decision, but most importantly, to support the women work. Because if women stop or disappear, the word disappears. When a mother is able to economically support her family, that family is able to grow, and that also impacts the community, and that community impacts the country, and that country impacts the rest of the world. Thank you very much, and may, you, may God bless you all.